We love this church. This is our church. When someone asks, well, what's the laity's voice in all this? What I hear from the people of God who I have been listening to over these last four or five months in a special way around this issue, the Archbishop McCarrick case has particularly upset them. Because in the case of Archbishop McCarrick, you have a situation in which a priest became an auxiliary bishop in a major metropolitan diocese, a, a, a diocesan bishop, an archbishop, and then an archbishop and cardinal. What the people don't understand is this behavior must have been known because people are saying it was known. And how did this? How did these promotions happen? Isn't that what people complained about in 2002? It wasn't so much the fact that there were individual people who did this terrible thing, but the fact that they were moved around which created the lack of trust. And in this instance, it's that a man got promoted even though there was predatory behavior in his, in his background. Uh, which should have eliminated him from consideration. My genuine hope that we'll emerge from this meeting with a strong advisory vote on behalf of this whole body that reflects the gravity of the issue at hand, the urgency of the matter, the depth of the breach of trust that has been experienced among victim survivors and certainly in our communities. I think that there is in fact an urgency and I hope we do emerge with one voice, an advisory vote perhaps, that we will do everything in our power to remove a cancer and help heal this wound that is affecting so deeply the living body of Christ. I want to witness to the fact that what we have now is not working and it's not transparent, um, even in terms of what the process is, much less uh, how it works, and it, it takes too much time. Meaningful constraints on an accused bishop. I think that's the kind of thing that would be meaningful to the lay faithful if there were meaningful, recognized constraints uh, during the time of the investigation, and then, of course, if he's been found guilty because we don't know why there's a correlation between an increased rate of homosexual clergy and an increased rate of sexual abuse of minors. So I would propose we commission a study to figure this out, and allow, or at least allow competent professionals in the field who want to conduct a study to have open access to all documentation and other such sources they need to help us understand this. There have been those who have said the Catholic Church is hung up on sex, and this may be further evidence of that. You know, we bishops are capable of malfeasance uh, in many other areas as well. Um, and so if this is the problem this week, uh, next week the people of God may be challenging us in other areas as well. Um, so I just wonder if th there's a certain blessing in the Holy See not allowing us to go forward with these provisions this week and that in the meetings that are taking place in February in Rome, there may be an opportunity really to adopt a, a much broader range of ways of holding bishops accountable and providing steps to deal with that. I'm wondering if we couldn't do something perhaps sooner rather than later to hold ourselves accountable, at least in the meantime. And could that be perhaps that we would follow up with allegations against a bishop, with the Metropolitan See, that that could be reviewed by the review board of that Metropolitan See, whether they be allegations of sexual abuse of minors or harassment or misconduct, and then have that review board of the Metropolitan See presented to the Holy See. There are ways in which we live as brothers that could be better. And I think that meaningful fraternal accountability is something we ought to take very seriously and that could be very helpful to us. Outrage, I guess, is important and it has its place, but today outrage has also become an industry. It's become an addiction. As we see in our polarized politics, people are increasingly addicted to outrage. And it's become a, an industry in which loggers and cable TV are 
using outrage as a business plan to drive readers or listeners to their sites or to their stations and therefore raise their advertising revenue. Uh, so I think you know, we can't allow ourselves to be caught and to be played by people that would ex exploit other people's outrage and use us to, to keep feeding it. It's one thing to put lay people on various commissions because we feel we should or we have to. It's another thing to invite the laity and warmly welcome them to be collaborators with us in the best possible sense of the word so that we can learn from them and they can learn from us so that we can grow together to overcome this problem. It occurs to me though that we might also benefit from the wisdom of our priests, our brother priests. They are our closest collaborators, uh, theologically, spiritually, administratively, and um, I believe that by tapping them in a more formal way, those bodies of priests with whom we have a relationship already, NFPC, NOSERC, CMSM, ANCH, that this would be very helpful for us. Mm -hmm.